then it will lead to the implication as though it is not God, but it is the laws of uh, nature, the, the, it is blind laws which are governing the universe. And therefore, there were specific recommendations. In the teaching of chemistry, do not say that hydrogen and oxygen when brought together will make water. Instead, you must teach it in the way that if hydrogen and oxygen are brought together, then by the will of Allah, they turn into water. And so in fact, you have in, in chemistry books, H, 2H plus O, arrow, and Nietzsche, uh, and uh, below, there is uh, Allah ke hukum say, by the <laughs> order of God, water on that side. <laughs> As a consequence of this way of thinking, our society has has distanced itself from society enormously. <coughs> Everything is related to religious practice, religious sayings, religion in one form or the other. And sometimes it leads to, to really bizarre conclusions. And this is uh, a little while ago that I was on, uh, te I was in a television debate with uh, the famous Maulana Etaramul Haq Thangi of Karachi. And it was about Islam and science. And the Maulana asserted, as uh, most Maulanas assert, that all science is to be found in the Quran, that all that one needs to do is learn the original Arabic and, well, you'll find it there. And he went on to say that actually this is what, uh, this, this is how the West learns science. Now, when the anchor turned to me, he said, do you agree with it? I said, uh, well, I find it very hard to believe that uh, developments of modern science could be in a book and that ancient and I find no evidence that any prediction has been made, has been made on this. But let me ask the Maulana, why is it that uh, we have the book but it's the West which has, which, which is miles ahead of us in science? And he said, ah, you don't know but before a Christian scientist goes to, before a, science, a scientist in the West goes to sleep, he reads the Quran. <laughs> and in the morning when he wakes up, he reads the Quran. And that's how he, and, and he does this before he goes to his lab. Well, it's, it's, it's hard to dispute such reasoning. So this was my first assertion first assumption that there is a disengagement from science, or at least what you and I would call science. Let me come to my second proposition. My, the, the title of my talk was Islam and Science. Is there a problem? And I, is, is that how you advertise it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I reflected upon that and I found that this is an unanswerable question. Whereas one can talk about how Muslims relate to science, it is impossible to say how Islam relates to science, whether it is in conformity or it is in contradiction, for the simple reason that we don't know who speaks for Islam. There is no Pope. There is nobody to adjudicate on, on what is the correct Islam or what is the correct Islamic interpretation of this or that issue. In fact, this, this uh, question came up in a very significant way at the time that I wrote my book, which uh, I wanted to call Islam and Science religious orthodoxy and the battle for rationality, and this was uh, 20 years ago. Well, I took it to um, 
Oxford University Press and they said, uh, no, we can't publish it because it, it could be construed as being critical of Islam. So they said, we will publish it, but as Muslims and science. I said, look, I'm not willing to do that. I'm not willing to take your editorial changes on that, but uh, uh, if you, so, the, so, the, so they turned me down. And in fact, it was then published here in London, or well, there in London, uh, by Z Books. However, when I rewrote it in Urdu, again, the publisher said that, uh, no, you can't make it Islam and science. We can only take it if you make it Muslims and science. I said, all right, fair enough. Uh, and I need to say what I need to say, never mind the title. The point is that one does not know what is the true Islamic position on science because there is a whole spectrum of views. In fact, today, much of the Muslim world is mired in a conflict which is internal. And that Conflict is not just about science, it's about everything. It's a conflict that's so deep that today, if you go to a shrine in Pakistan, you will not, you may not return alive. So many of them have been bombed by other Muslims who think that worshipping at shrines is the equivalent of shirk, of, uh, of, uh, shirk um, yes. yes. It's uh, putting up something else as, as worship. Nevertheless, one must address the question how does Islam, in some sense, think about science? Is there conformity? Is there contradiction? If there is conformity or contradiction, at what level is that? Now, Every ancient religion has things in it that are in flat contradiction with what science believes. And no matter how you skirt that problem, or try to skirt that problem, you can't get away with it. Most particularly the issue of miracles. Did the great flood happen? Is man descended from Adam and Eve? These are things that, that science has a very particular <coughs> view of and they are not negotiable. No, that flood did not happen. No, God does not send meteors across the sky to punish the devil. Sorry, it's not science, but it's in holy books. So does that mean that there is overt, obvious contradiction?